Why do we sleep? A question that has troubled philosophers and scientists for centuries. Why do you spend hours of your precious time unconscious or dreaming? The answer to the question why we need to sleep seems clear. Without sleep, we become tired and irritable, and our brains become dysfunctional. After a good night of sleep, we feel refreshed and restored. But what exactly is being restored by sleep? Stay tuned and I'll introduce you to the synaptic homeostasis hypothesis or SHI. It will explain how sleep may modulate your brain plasticity. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala and I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. In this video, I will walk you through something called the synaptic homeostasis hypothesis or SHI. SHI was first introduced in a 2003 paper by the researchers Giulio Tononi and Chiara Cirelli. They are both eminent researchers in the field of neuroscience and sleep research. Now, as I mentioned previously, the question why we sleep seems rather easy to answer. To feel refreshed and restored. However, what exactly is being restored by sleep has proven harder to explain. Sleep occupies a large fraction of the day and takes up a significant amount of time in our lives. Sleep is also something that occurs all the way from early development to old age. In most cases, we spend approximately a third of our lives sleeping. If you live up to the ripe age of 85, you've likely gone through around 750,000 hours of life, and out of those, around 250,000 hours you've actually spent sleeping. Quite a significant amount of time spent doing nothing useful, one might think. The fact that sleep is present in all species that have been carefully studied so far, from simple insects to the variety of mammals, suggests that it serves an important purpose. Considering that sleep constitutes more or less a disconnection from the environment, often accompanied by immobility, means that it also poses a significant risk. This risk includes the opportunity costs of not doing something more productive or essential for survival. The synaptic homeostasis hypothesis, or SHI, proposes that sleep, or the time spent offline, serves a very important purpose. According to SHI, the fundamental function of sleep is the restoration of synaptic homeostasis, which is challenged by synaptic strengthening triggered by learning during wake and by synaptogenesis during development. In other words, sleep is the price we pay for plasticity. Here, in this context, the term plasticity refers to neuroplasticity, or the ability of the brain to change in response to external and internal environments. Plasticity can be thought of as a property of our neural networks to learn and adapt to our ever-changing environments throughout our lives. Now, for the sake of simplicity, let's put it this way. When you're actively awake and go about your business, your brain is in constant interaction with your environment and your internal processes. This causes neurons to fire in certain patterns, promoting increases in synaptic strength, particularly in response to salient events. You can also think of neurons behaving similarly to muscle cells. When you go to the gym and lift some weights, your muscle cells respond by growing and gaining strength. When you learn a new skill or acquire new knowledge, in other words, train your brain, the connections between neurons grow and gain strength. But what do we need sleep for? The thing is that increased synaptic strength, like muscle size, comes with various costs at the cellular and systems levels. Increased synaptic strength means higher energy consumption and greater demand for the delivery of cellular supplies to synapses. 
According to Shai, increased synaptic strength also reduces the selectivity of neural responses and saturates the ability to learn. So, what sleep does, according to Shai, is the renormalization of synaptic strength. This means that over sleep, all synapses are scaled down in strength, and by renormalizing synaptic strength, sleep reduces the burden of plasticity on neurons and other cells, while restoring neural selectivity and the ability to learn. It also enhances signal-to-noise ratios, leading to the consolidation and integration of memories. So, to put it simply, there's a net increase in synaptic strength during wake, and there is a net decrease in synaptic strength during sleep. And these serve a specific purpose throughout our lives, throughout our waking and throughout our sleep. According to the theory, neurons should increase their synaptic strength during waking when we're actively interacting and engaging with the environment. We're also forming memories, learning new things, and all, all of that requires synaptic strengthening. On the other hand, during sleep, when we are essentially disconnected from our environment, an opportunity arises to renormalize synaptic strength. And neurons should renormalize synapses in sleep when they can sample the wide selection of accumulated events or memories comprehensively. Let's take an example from one of the papers. Consider spending a day with a new acquaintance. By the evening, neurons in various brain areas have learned to recognize the person's face, voice, posture, clothes, and so on by strengthening incoming synapses. But it would not be a good idea to renormalize total synaptic strength based on that one day. Otherwise, one would remember the new acquaintance, but, for example, forget old friends a problem known as the plasticity-stability dilemma. There are many ways how the process of renormalization could take place during sleep. But in all cases, some synapses become less effective than others. I won't go to the details in this video, but one idea is that neurons that fire particularly strongly during sleep are preferentially protected from synaptic depression mechanisms and may consolidate. Other less activated synapses are depressed, resulting in the consolidated synapses becoming stronger in relative terms. In a sense, this downselection ensures the survival of the circuits that are fittest and best integrated with older memories. So, in short, Shai suggests that we need to renormalize our synaptic strength every night, and that this process is necessary to keep the brain functional able to learn and allow for continuous plasticity throughout our lives. Now, some of you might be interested in the actual evidence to support this hypothesis. And I can say that there's a fair bit of data to back up this idea, but it still remains unclear whether global renormalization of synaptic strength actually happens during sleep, and if so, to what extent. All of this will essentially be beyond the scope of this introductory video, but if you're interested in that, please leave a comment down below. That's all for today. Please remember to press the like button and also subscribe to my channel to support future neuroscience and neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.